hopefully I'm not cutting off my head in this first clip. <laughs> Am I? Oh gosh, I hope not. Um, hi guys, and welcome to tonight's vlog, I should say, not today's. It is currently 9.20 p.m. and we are doing a spend a full night with my newborn and I. <laughs> or full night with a newborn, I don't know what I'm gonna title this, something like that. You know <laughs> what it's called. I've seen these videos floating around. I thought it would be a cool idea where I just take you through what nighttime and night feeds and everything is like with our new baby. And every night is a little different, obviously. Newborns only have, you know, so much of a schedule, so much of a routine when they're this little. So right now it is 9.21 and we are all ready for bed. We actually start our bedtime routine at about seven o'clock or like, yeah, yeah, at seven o'clock. Um, and he's already had his first tiny chunk of sleep. He usually goes down for like almost like his, it's not his first official chunk of sleep. It's like a pre-bed nap is what he does around eight o'clock and he'll sleep for like an hour and then he'll wake up and eat, maybe look around for a little bit and then he'll go back to sleep. So Cody had him and he had some daddy snuggles and he sl he had that first little chunk of sleep on Cody's chest downstairs. And then while he was sleeping with Cody, I had a bath and had a nice hot bath. And so I feel really refreshed and lovely. And then I took off all my makeup and did all that. And um, I get him ready for bed before that little nap happens, like right after dinner. Now we're about to start our night. So it is again, like almost 9.30. So he'll go to sleep probably like now-ish for the night. And when I say for the night, I'll show you what I mean. So he right now is usually sleeping four hour stretches. He sleeps like almost five hours sometimes for this first stretch. And then like if he falls asleep by 10, that's if he doesn't fall asleep in the next 10 minutes by 9.30. Usually he wakes up around 3 a.m. Um, and then after that point, he'll usually wake up a little sooner and he'll eat a little bit more. So he'll like maybe go two to three hours and then maybe it's like an hour and <laughs> so it varies every night. I was setting alarms for myself every four hours so that um, if he hadn't woken me up by before that four hour mark, I could, you know, check on him, see if he's hungry, check his bum, things like that. Um, but now he is seven weeks old, he turned seven weeks old just two days ago, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I've like, I'm just like weaning myself off of that habit. And so I figured this would be a good time to film this video. Since I don't need my phone near me, I can just leave it on my tripod and we can, I can just press record when we wake up in the middle of the night. So I'm going to see, I'll probably have to turn this light on. We keep the mood lighting real chill. I have an orange lamp, orange hued lamp at my bedside and a salt lamp over there. And then I also have a night light behind the camera. And the night light is the only light we use for nighttime. It's just enough light that I can see him through the night, um, but it's not enough to disturb our sleep or wake us up. But for the camera's sake, I'll probably just hit the lamp through the night feeds tonight. Um, I don't know what this video is gonna look like, obviously. I don't know if he's, maybe it won't be very interesting if he doesn't wake up very many times. But I'm going to bring you guys along right through until morning, just for a little look into our nighttime. Hopefully you don't catch me feeding like this and just like dozing. <laughs> He's a really good sleeper though. Um, we've been very lucky with all of our babies being really good sleepers. Now I say really good sleeper, babies wake up in the night, they need to eat breast milk, digest super fast, especially. Still a great sleeper though, like getting a couple hours stretch is fantastic in my eyes. If he, we didn't bed share, it would be a totally different story. Um, I feel like just a little PSA, since you are going to be seeing me bed sharing, obviously I'm a huge advocate for bed sharing, but I'm a huge advocate for safe bed sharing and following the safe sleep seven you don't know what that is i will leave a link below for the safe sleep seven um and it's just seven steps that you should follow to safely bed share with your baby to make sure they are safe and because a bed can obviously be quite hazardous um but traditionally we have been sleeping with our babies for since the dawn of time since humans were a thing we've been sleeping with our infants um it's natural it's instinctual it's not for everybody and that's okay 
but we would definitely not sleep as much if he was sleeping in like a bassinet beside the bed he wakes up super easy but because we bed share he sleeps for these long stretches for me because he can feel me he can hear my heartbeat he can hear my breathing and it keeps him feeling safe and happy and to sleep for longer i don't know if you can see maybe in the morning i'll actually talk about this um and just give you guys a little rundown on how we specifically bed share safely. We figured this method out for our family when our daughter was a baby. So there are many different ways you can safely bed share and, and different things will work for, you know, different people and different families and different house setups. But what works for us is a bed rail. So you just need to find a really a bed rail that is very, very secure to your bed. For our, us, it's extra secure because our bed rail gets wedged in our bed frame. So there's no moving it. Like it moves, wiggles up here, but like there's no gaps or anything. Um, thanks to the type of mattress we have. Babies shouldn't be sleeping in the middle between the parents because moms have different instincts than dads do. Dads just do not sleep as sensitively um, as moms do, especially breastfeeding moms. When they are, when they have babies, we are just super light sleepers. Um, and we hear every little sound they make and dads don't necessarily there's more of a chance for the blankets to be pulled up over them yada yada, yada. again i'm not going to like go over too much safety i'll maybe talk about it in the morning when we wake up but the bed rail is peace of mind for me so he sleeps between the bed rail and then i sleep in the middle and then cody sleeps on the edge um and i curl my body into a c shape around him and that's how we sleep at night We've also tried different methods before where like the bed was just on the floor so we didn't need a bed rail we just put the mattress straight on the floor um which we contemplated but we like our bed frame we like it being a little higher so bed rail is what we went with this time again so yeah um i am going to as soon as he falls asleep here or if he doesn't fall asleep then maybe we'll just hang out for a little bit but usually i will watch a little bit of tv or read a book Right now, I've got my... It's so, like, I am already ready for bed, by the way. Like, I went and washed my face and brushed my teeth and did all my skincare. Um, I'm going to go through my Outlander cookbook, which I am so in love with. I got this for Christmas, and um, I've been just skimming through it. I love it because, like, I'm, I might try and cook my way through this whole thing. But I'm just going to go through and write down the top recipes I would like to try now. So I'm going to just do some cookbook gonna do some cookbook looking I've got my cookbook and my notepad I'm currently watching the like working my way through the new <gasps> update episodes of love is blind sometimes I watch a little bit of TV um, you guys know that I've been going through like a shitty reality TV binge because I can't focus on anything right now I'm just I'm just I'm just not interested in like sitting down and like really focusing on things because I just want to be able to turn it off when I'm tired or whatever if he needs me, I don't want to have to focus on what is going on. So, um, also a thing to note, the big kids are going are yeah. downstairs having their bedtime snack right now. And then they will be up to chat with me and say goodnight and do the evening bits. Um, we've already done part of our bedtime routine together with big kids. And Finn is in bed with us, our little chihuahua. Carly comes to bed with Cody usually. <laughs> And Cody um, won't come to bed until probably, oh, maybe he'll come to bed earlier tonight. He usually comes to bed between midnight and one. I go to sleep a lot earlier. I go to sleep with him. So when he go, I, well, I either go to sleep with him or I go to sleep around 11 if he's, if I stay up a little bit past him. But yeah, I think that's all the rundown I've got for you. And we're just going to hang out and I guess come spend a night with us.
Okay, good morning, you guys. I don't know how crazy I look, but that's okay. Um, we're downstairs because I was just having breakfast and doing ow, our morning routine. Um, but I just wanted to say hello and talk to you guys about our night and kind of wrap up this video. So last night was really good. We only were up three times and his first wake up was at like 12.30 and that was really random. Normally he goes, Oh. oh, so I feel like before I say anything else, I should say that if I didn't say in the beginning, I know most of you know me already, but these videos always attract some new people. Um, and if I didn't say in the beginning, um, Zag is seven weeks old. Um, so I know he's very large <laughs> for a newborn, but he's still a newborn. Um, we make large babies. We have very very big newborns. <laughs> so I was thinking about that because I watched another video of somebody doing it with like a baby similar age and they look so tiny and I'm just like plopping around my big three month looking <laughs> newborn baby. Uh, um, so yeah, he still is a newborn. <laughs> I'm not misleading you by the title. Um, anyway, last night was really good. He only did three wake ups, like three feeds. And we did two diaper changes. Last night was a little bit weird. Like normally we don't, we wouldn't wake up an hour after we went to bed. Like that 1230 wake up was weird. So I think it's a combination of, of two things. We went out in the evening last night and we took him and he fell asleep in the car seat. And I think he had like a deeper nap than he would normally have in the evening. And that might have thrown him off a little bit. And then this, okay, so maybe three things. The second thing was when he first fell asleep, normally at seven o'clock, we go upstairs and I'm up there for the night. Um, and I get him ready for bed. And if I come downstairs again, it's just me. I keep him up there in his, like in our room where he's used to going to sleep. And I think he's already used to that rhythm and having him sleep on Cody's chest on the couch last night, maybe threw him off a little bit while I had a bath, but worth it because the bath was lovely. Um, and the third thing that happened was that like my big kid, so if you are new here, I have a 12 year old and a almost nine year old and as well. Can you not? I don't know if you can see the 12 year old drinking a smoothie in the background, but they were being little Maudies last night. They were just goofing around and um, they were having a hard time remembering to be quiet. And so they were, like giggling really loudly and playing around with each other. Um, they attempted to have a sleepover and it was just too chaotic and they had, to, they had to go into their own rooms. But there was just like a lot of ruckus happening around like 11 and Cody came to bed earlier because he had a tournament to go to today that he normally doesn't come to bed until like 1 a.m. So I think there was just, a, just enough weirdness in his night that like it just made it a little bit different so he didn't fall asleep for a while like you saw me putting him to bed and it was 9 30 when i started the vlog but he probably didn't fall asleep till like oh 10 maybe later 10 30 he just like yeah he was just struggling to fall asleep and i think it was just like just enough weirdness to just that kept him awake which is fine but normally our night he'll go to sleep you know and then he'll sleep until like 10, 10 30 and we'll do his first feed then and then I'll go to bed around that time between like 10 and 11. Um, so, and then he won't wake up again until like 3 a.m. So that's normally what he does, but last night was a little bit different, but that's okay. So anyway, it was a really good night though. Um, again, I'm pretty lucky and uh, we have a really good rhythm already and he just sleeps really solidly. Um, 
I need to start working on going to bed earlier and we need to like work out that first chunk of sleep so I can go to bed around 10 or something so that I can get up at, at like 6 30 7 a.m um wake time and then I can just get up and he can go back to sleep for his last chunk and I can go get ready and do yoga and stuff so that's our goal moving forward but maybe I'll do another like morning routine or something eventually uh I hope you enjoyed this video it was a little bit different I said I was going to show you guys how we sleep um, so before I make my bed, I will take you guys upstairs and show you guys how we bed share safely and how it works for us and like the position I get in and how I keep my pillows and everything so that it's all safe for our little baby. Okay, so I've got a bit of a cranky baby, but I want to show you what it's like when we sleep and how we actually bed share um, and how we follow the safe sleep seven. I'm leaving my bed messy because it's realistic and I need the blanket to be loose anyway so Zagreus goes here at breast height yes and I make sure everything is out of the way brief moment of feeding because we got angry hold on he got woken up from his nap by a wet diaper and he was upset about it so give him a second so normally I would actually do some nighttime lay down feedings and I will eventually but he's still just too young for my comfort uh, because he can't actively like roll away whenever he wants to um, I don't nurse side lying just in case I fall asleep but I will when he's older and this is the way we will nurse when he's old enough to like move around on his own this is why I usually have a burp cloth and I just forgot it and now we have a milk ring for the rest of this uh, video. Okay, so we're just gonna keep going because this is mom life. So I put him here and everything is behind me. I do not sleep with this many pillows, but this is because I sit up to nurse. This is what you guys saw me do. Um, so this pillow comes between my knees to keep me comfortable and I lock it in between my knees. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so again, there's nothing up here. I use a blanket on my baby. That is um, a bit of a hot topic in the baby community in general um do your own research do what's comfortable for you i've always used a blanket i don't personally like sleep sacks so what i do is i fold it in half so it's not long and i only put it up to his waistband so i don't know if you can see there's his pants right here so this is his belly button um and i tuck the rest of it around his feet and around his legs and then when I curl up around him, so here's my knees, this is my thigh, and he sleeps like this, and this arm, actually, I hold the blanket with this arm at his feet, so, like, it's not riding up at all. Again, probably not the safest thing I could be doing, but it's something I'm comfortable doing, and um, my babies are just not warm enough without a blanket at night because it's, we're Canadian, it's freaking cold here. Okay, so, if I sleep in, like, pajamas so that I stay warm... Um, I will adjust the pajama I wear depending on the temperature, but we keep our, our house at, the, at a good temperature. Now, in the past, we have used separate blankets and stuff, but I haven't found a need to use a separate blanket from my husband because we cuddle. <laughs> but this is how I do it. So instead of just laying the blanket here and having the potential of the blanket cover him or anything, what I do is I take the corner of my blanket and I tuck it under my leg so it's with the pillow so there's no loose blankets that can come up and be on the baby at all and then it wraps kind of around my my hips and then i take my pillow and i shove it to the very back poor cody gets a pillow in his face every night but oh well um and i just keep it on my shoulder so there's no pillow over here and then i sleep with this arm right here sometimes i grab onto the rail and I cuddle my other arm here and I grab that blanket like I said and this is how we sleep at night see he's like what are we doing are we going to bed and I sleep with him in this C shape and sometimes I can put my head my hand up here if I want but my pillow does not come forward I just minimally support my head and neck and then this is how we sleep safely now if you didn't have a blanket you could just obviously remove the blanket baby could just be here and that's how you could sleep but this is how we personally follow the safe sleep seven nothing else is in this vicinity these pillows can't possibly come up because i do not move in my sleep i don't roll i don't 
Like, I'm such a light sleeper, and I'm so used to sleeping on one side that I'm one of those weird sleepers that, like, do not move in my sleep. Um, my husband, on the other hand, moves a lot, so he stays on his side. And, yeah, I don't... I will literally, like, go to sleep in one position and wake up in that position eight hours later. I'm weird, and I don't move, so... That's why, but I keep the pillow between my knees for support, to support my hips so that I have good posture. I don't wake up sore or anything like that. If you are sore, you could apply another pillow to your back, your lower back, and that could be comfortable. Um, but yeah, this is how we get good sleeps and we stay safe and we keep cold sleeping a thing that works for us. When he is much older, we're talking like probably like one and a half kind of thing, then maybe I would let him use some of the blanket because he can roll around, he can like scrunch it up, you know, like when they're old enough, but this is not something I would do now. So I keep it tucked under and I use his own blanket. Yeah, that's how we do it. That's how we bed share safely. Um, everybody has their own ways. There are many different ways you can follow the Safe Sleep 7. It doesn't have to look like my setup. Um, you also don't have to bed share, but like obviously, I feel like I'm not gonna put PSAs in my videos anymore and in my Instagram posts because I'm just so sick of like feeling like I have to accommodate everybody's style of parenting to be able to talk about anything <laughs> and it's frustrating. So I'm just not gonna do it anymore. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was informative for you. Um, and if any, nothing else, I hope if you also have a newborn or a small baby, this video just makes you remember that you're not alone and that every time you get up in the middle of the night there are thousands of women that are up with you with their babies um, doing the nighttime parenting too. So thanks for watching you guys. We'll see you in my next one. Bye! Are you going to stay here, sir? Are you just falling asleep? Oh, you're so tired ready for a nap. But let's, I'm going to switch you to the bassinet. Yeah, so I can work.